Hi everyone, happy holidays. Hope you are all safe and well. And uh, you may be looking at the things next to me and on the rack and wondering what is going on. Well, uh, we keep getting comments from people about my personal stash of clothing. So I grabbed some things from my closet and thought I would explain what they are, why I have kept it, and uh, we'll take it from there. So hope, I hope you like it. Uh, one of the things I love to do when I'm traveling is look for unique pieces. And when I was in Puerto Vallarta two winters ago, uh, I was lucky enough to be there when they had kind of a craft sale in, um, in a Zocalo. I was lucky enough to be there when they had a craft fair in a small kind of park, a square park, not far from my hotel. And there was this artist who created artwork with beads. And I bought this portrait of Frida, all done with seed beads. And I just think it's spectacular. And it's being um, matched with one of my favorite 1930s partial bias cut dresses. Used to fit me. Um, my goal is for 2021 for me to be able to wear it again. Um, the detailing on this, it has flutter sleeves because of ruching. And this wonderful ruching here which gives room to the hips and the belly. Uh, but the best part of this, besides the ruching, is the print. It's really beautiful. And for those of you that have watched a few of these episodes, you know that purple and blue are my favorite colors. So, um, And then to add a splash of color to kind of go with Frida's hair piece, this pom-pom, oops, belt, necklace, headband, whatever you want. Um, I bought this also in Vallarta. I think it's from the state of Chiapas. So that's this mannequin. And then on this mannequin, we have more pom-poms to kind of a splash, oops, hello, a splash of color on something that doesn't really need a splash of color. This is a really unique I think the print is Indian, and someone sequined around the print um, and really zhuzhed it up. I love that word, zhuzh. Um, and it's to be worn when you feel like you want some attention. It's like a light bulb. And matched with that is a purse that I wish I actually found in Thailand, I did not, but it's, um, I bought a lot of these because I was planning on donating them to an animal charity, um, but it is a purse that is made out of metal and leather, and um, it's whimsical, but we have other ones, other styles, if this is something that moves you and you'd like to see images, just comment on the YouTube um, on this episode, and we'll get them to you. Uh, it's a fun and funny gift, and it's under $99. And then back to the rack. Um, okay, and then back to the rack. You know what? Oh, I should comment on what I'm wearing. The wonderful thing about being in Los Angeles is there is a, a craft and folk art museum called Craft Contemporary now. And in the summertime, they have these workshops. And the first workshop that I took was on Shibori dyeing. And I fell in love with indigo. It is, in the truest sense of the word, alchemy in the 21st century. If you've never dyed indigo, do it. It'll blow your mind. The vat is um, kind of a pale chartreuse color, and when you take the item out of the water, 
it is a pale chartreuse color and as the oxygen as it gets oxygenated it slowly turns into indigo it's it's magic i mean i'm hooked so when i retire i want to weave and i want to dye um, what i'm wearing is a very boring 1980s dress that i did some shibori dyeing with indigo and um, the scarf which i also did shibor shibori dyeing but this sweater had stains all over it and i took two spray bottles one i put purple dye and the other i put indigo and i just spritzed it so you can't tell where the stains are and i'm wearing my favorite color so just wanted to mention that because the next item is a beautiful eastern european hand embroidered blouse that had stains everywhere and so to camouflage the stains i dipped this in an indigo dye that and although it's splotchy i actually like it so there are ways to make things wearable and more perfect eastern european hand embroidered blouse uh, the uh, embroidery on this is just gorgeous <sighs> something to wear in the summertime with smocking at the neck and you may have seen me wear this in the Pucci episode, but this gorgeous poncho. You know, having this business uh, has its advantages. I get to snag whatever comes in that I think is representative of my personality. Um, the bad news is that because of my stature and my uh, figure, I can't wear everything. So that leaves an entire store full of inventory for, for other people. Um, that being said, this is a 1920s silk beaded tunic. I've worn this um, to a cocktail party with a drop waist skirt and killer boots and i love things that have embroidery this is chinese made for the american market black satin with silk embroidery um, throw this over a basic piece and you've really amped it up and last but not least, this is, oh no, there's one more piece after that. This is very reminiscent of Yves Saint Laurent. I don't know what country it's from, but uh, it's, it's a wonderful design with these bands of embroidered ribbon and sequins. But um, Yves Saint Laurent or I've actually seen Oscar de la Renta doing a piece very similar. This is from the 40s. It's lined in the Scaparelli pink. And I uh, love it. And last but not least, I love Whimsy. And this Castel Bajac kind of a messenger bag, which is... Um, Pacific Northwest tribal, I forget if it's Quakutal or Clinket, but it's one of those tribes. You'll see totem poles, totems that have this uh, image. And it's, it's a great bag. I don't think I've ever seen another Castel Jacques piece like this. So, so yeah, so these are a few things from my closet. Uh, the only thing that would be available for sale would be various versions of this dog. These are things that are from my personal closet. And um, I have, as all of you who are lovers of vintage, eclectic 
taste. We don't follow the path of, I mean, I don't really have a lot of logo things. Not that I'm against them, it's just not who I am. Um, I really like to be more of an individual in the way I dress. So um, keep those suggestions coming. We are getting ready to wrap up for what has been a really outrageous year. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. So please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We're, we're slowly inching towards 50,000 subscribers. And if you've purchased anything from us uh, in the past, we'd love to have a photo of you in it. So we can do that as kind of a montage when we hit 50,000. So thank you very much for your time and attention. We all wish you all the best for a healthy, happy 2021. Be safe and be well, and uh, that's it for now. Bye.